Hey everyone, so uh, I saw last night the movie Southpaw stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Rachel McAdams, and Forrest Whitaker. Now normally I would give you guys the premise of this film, but uh, it has been given away in the trailer uh, and TV spots, so there's no reason for me to give you like a premise for this movie, because you know it, you know it. Um, but you're watching this review to see if you want to watch this movie. Um, so let's get to the positives now. Um, the positives of this movie, there are a couple. Um, for one, Jake Gyllenhaal, as always, he did a really good job in this film. He's really turned his career around, and he's been in a lot of serious roles as of late. And because of that, he's gotten a lot of attention from critics and movie buffs alike. And I, for one, have to say that he's one of my favorite actors playing roles today. Like, I loved him in Prisoners. I loved him in the movie Enemy. And Nightcrawler, he was just phenomenal. Will he get an Oscar nomination for Southpaw? No. No, there's not a chance in the world. Like, he's good in this movie, but if he can't get an Oscar nomination for Nightcrawler, there's no way he's going to get nominated for Southpaw. I'm sorry. Um, but he was really good, and the supporting cast, Forrest Whitaker, he was really good. I mean, his character was kind of, like, cliched, but that's what this movie kind of deals with. It deals with a lot of cliches, but that's not what I'm going to get into just yet. I also really enjoyed uh, James Horner's score. He uh, composed this movie, and this was his last movie that he composed um, before his death, unfortunately. And even at, in the end credits, they uh, say in loving memory of James Horner. So I really liked that. I really liked that they uh, paid tribute to him, because he did a really good job with the score in this movie, as I'm saying. Um, I also really, really liked the tone of this movie, like... The story is predictable, flat out predictable, but I like how the tone of this movie is very serious, so it doesn't feel quite as predictable as it really is, because it really is predictable, but the tone makes it very serious, so you feel as though the situation could happen to you, and you don't really see that too often in the movie, so I really liked that. Um, I also enjoyed some of the training montage scenes, they were pretty cool. They really got you into, like, uh, boxing. Because, I mean, I'm not really into boxing, per se, but I do enjoy a good boxing movie, which leads me into the negatives of this film. Um, I'll be honest. I thought this movie was flat-out predictable, and not really in a good way, because there are boxing movies where it's really predictable, such as the first Rocky, and then there are other sport-related movies that are predictable, and it's just, like, it doesn't work because... It just feels so contrived. Like, I'm not going to lie. This movie, like, when I got into Half Hour Mark, I was like, yeah, I know everything that's going to happen pretty much. And I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, well, just because you know what's going to happen doesn't mean it's a bad movie. And I'm not saying this is a bad movie. I'm just saying that with what the actors had to work with and with the director who was put behind the lens, you would think that they did something different with this boxing genre, and they just didn't, and that's what I don't like. And I'm also not going to lie, I really didn't like the cinematography. Like, some critics have been saying that it's good. Me, personally, I really didn't like it. I thought there was way too many extreme close-up shots. I thought that they did a lot of slow motion, unnecessarily so, and I thought that there wasn't enough wide-angle shots so you could get a feel of what was going on. And even during the boxing scenes, like, you really, it, it, it was really hard to follow what's going on. And I don't like that when you can't really tell what's going on. And you, you may say that, oh, well, that's the point because, uh, you know, you want to feel like you're in his shoes. But it wasn't done correctly. Like, it wasn't done professionally, in my opinion. And I also just have to say that these characters are, like, their arcs are so predictable and they're so cliched. Like, Force Whitaker's character, I thought Force Whitaker did good, but I thought his character was pretty much Morgan Freeman's in Million Dollar Baby. And if this movie's trying to depress me, why don't I, why don't I just go home and watch Million Dollar Baby? <laughs> Million Dollar Baby was excellent. Why don't I just watch that? So, what I'm trying to say to you guys in conclusion is that this movie isn't groundbreaking. This movie isn't good. It's just okay. If you can get past all these cliches and just appreciate your Joan Hall's performance, you'll like it. Now, do I think it's worth eleven to thirteen dollars or even six dollars matinee price? No, I don't. I think there are better movies out there in theaters right now that you could see. I think that you could appreciate other films. And I think if as if you want to see an action film, I'd say just 
wait for, you know, Mission Impossible 5, which I will be seeing next week, and I will try and post a review for you guys next week. Um, but anyways, my rating for South Pole, I will be giving this movie a 3 out of 5 star rating. And normally that would be a D plus, but I'm going to give it a C minus letter grade because Jake Gyllenhaal was really good in this movie and as always, nailed it. Um, but that's it for today, guys. Um, so let me know what you think of uh, South Pole. And if you have any questions about this movie, just uh, comment in the uh, comment section.